All right, it's October, spooky season. Let's paint something undead. Hey there, hobby friends. I'm Jared, and this is Caffeinated Miniatures. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Halloween is one of my favorite times of the year, and conveniently, Games Workshop has released Curse City again. So what better way to celebrate than to paint up something ghoulish and undead? Enter in Goroslav the Gravekeeper. I have been blown away by the sculpts in this box. Sure, I'd seen them online and they look damn good there, but in person, they are just so much cooler. Except the zombies. What is with all the crap growing out of the zombies? But I digress. Let's throw some paint on this undead bastard. To quickly add some interest to the base, I cut up a couple of small, beat up stone tiles out of some plastic card. Then I diluted some brown earth, earth texture from Vallejo with water to make it easier to brush on. Slapping it onto the base. As I was doing this prior to priming, the earth texture color really didn't matter. I just liked the particular texture in this one. Once that texture paint was dry, I hosed everything down with wraith bone and sat down to paint. To give the skin that sickly, unhealthy, undead look, I started off base coating it with Griff Charger Grey contrast paint. I felt like the contrast paint would give some immediate depth to the shadows and help me visualize how to build up the volumes. And it mostly did. After giving that contrast paint plenty of time to dry, aka using the hairdryer, I set about building the volumes of the skin. This was done with a mix of black, white, and light sea gray. Adding more and more cold white as I went. At this point, I was pretty sure the skin needed something else, something more. However, I decided to get paint on more of the model before I decided what that was. Moving on to the torn robe thing began with a mix of black, red, and a little green, looking to create a deep, desaturated red shadow tone. With my first attempt at highlighting, I tried adding some ice yellow to the mix. However, it just was too bright and saturated. So I went back to the original mix of black, red, and green and began mixing in some ivory to build the volumes. This kept more of that desaturated look that I was much, much happier with. Sticking with the rough, tattered look, I layered on the paint in thin lines, kind of mimicking a rough fabric. Once I felt like the light was pretty decent, I mixed some violet, black, and brown inks, glazing in some deeper shadows, trying to reinforce the contrast from light to shadow. Moving on to the wooden shovel handle, I mixed black Templar and snakebite leather contrast paints, creating a dark and dirty looking brown. Then built up some volumes with a mix of medium flesh tone and ivory, increasing the amount of ivory as I went. Ultimately, I felt like it was a little too bright or clean looking. So I thinned down a mix of brown and black inks, using it as a filter to slightly darken everything. Next on the docket was all the metal bits. I wanted all the metal to reflect the cool blue dungeon kind of environment I was picturing. So I leaned into a very blue steel sort of metal. Starting off with a mix of black and dark sea blue then quickly dropping the black using pure dark sea blue. 
To build up the bright, specular highlights of the metal, I added cold white to the dark sea blue, continuing to add more and more of the white until the very brightest points were nearly pure cold white. At this point, I turned back to Gorslav's flesh. I felt like certain areas, such as underneath the arms, needed to be darkened a fair amount. So I mixed some Rift Charger Grey and Black Templar Contrast Paint, once again using it as a filter over the areas I wanted to darken. I really like using contrast paints in this way. I tend to dilute them a little more. Yeah, just using water. Don't at me, bro. Then I'll control how much paint is on the brush by dabbing it off on some paper towel. And this allows you to slowly build opacity, making certain areas darker or more vibrant, depending on what you're looking for. Moving on to the base, because I was fairly happy with how the base for Haskell Hexbane turned out, I thought I'd kind of follow the same method here. After coating everything with Elphic Flesh, I slapped on Black Templar Contrast Paint. As I said in the last video, I found that Black Templar has an interesting blue-green tone when over a warm ivory. Once that was good and dry, I just dry brushed on some light sea grey and a very light dry brush of ivory. Add a few pieces of grass tufts and moss. And Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, we've got a completed model. Well, there you have it. I've been sitting with the model for several days now and it, it just needs something else. I think some rust. The metal needs some corrosion, some oxidization. Now I realize there are loads of great products on the market to help create that effect, but I'm not gonna buy something. I prefer to experiment and figure it out creatively. But that sounds like a whole other video. You should probably subscribe and hit that notification bell so YouTube lets you know when I post it. As always, if you made it this far, you are an absolute legend. Why don't you hit the like button and do all the things. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Oh well, that fell over. And scared me.